our dear viewers and welcome to a new edition of Body and Soul. In today's edition, I would like first to uh, say Happy New Year to everyone and Happy New Beginning of the year 2017. Wish everyone that the year 2013 uh, and 17 rather would be a happy uh, and prosperous year for everyone and would be better than 2016. And uh, today we are going to talk about a related issue, which is the new beginnings. How can we have new beginnings? How we could uh, have uh, new startups, uh, new uh, fresh starts, and we should not be afraid of any change in our lives. That would be our topic for discussion with our dear guest in the studio, Ms. Marwa Saleh. She is uh, an NLP uh, coach. Hello, Ms. Marwa. Hello. Ms. Marwa, as we are starting a new year, we are talking about fresh starts, we are talking about new beginnings. Uh, why people do, uh, ha why people are actually scared of uh, the fresh start or new beginnings or to take uh, actual steps in order to have a new beginning? Great. Because a, a lot of people are afraid of change. We're brought, mm -hmm. up, we're brought up to like and understand what we know mm -hmm. and the familiar things, familiar situations, familiar people. So change in itself and new beginnings is sometimes scary for a lot mm -hmm. of people. Um, so we actually, uh, if we decide mm -hmm. that we're going to put a vision in front of ourselves, mm -hmm. decide that we have a certain vision for 2017, mm -hmm. and write that vision down, mm -hmm. uh, that might help us take steps towards that vision and, and well, accept the change. Vision on which uh, angle, from which perspective, uh, Ms. Mar? Okay, so each individual can have different visions in different areas of life. Mm. So I might, for example, decide to draft down a vision for my career mm. uh, that says where I want to be next year or where I want mm. to be a couple of years from now. Mm. And I might have a vision on my health, my mm. my well-being, and my 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 well-being in terms of health. Mm. I might have another vision for my family and my children. So mm. we have different visions in different areas. Mm. If we decide that we're going to put that vision in front of us and start working on it step by step, it would make new beginnings seem positive and bright. Hopefully. And uh, now we'll take this report by Samah al-Sharif about optimism and new beginnings, and then we'll be back to continue our interview here in the city. National psychologist and writer says, what if we adopted a fresh perspective when the old one holds us back, replaced a bad habit with a good one, and replenished our energy reserves on a continual basis, rather than wait until we are completely depleted? Donna Sill's inspirational lines encourages optimism at new beginnings. She says, how might our lives be different if we choose optimism over pessimism, gratitude over complaint, and self-acceptance over self-criticism? She says, a new beginning in any aspect of our lives can be born at any moment in time. The only ingredient requires is free will, which we all fortunately have an endless supply of. Is it time to hit the refresh button in your life? What do you need right now to feel healthy, balanced, and recharged? What brings you joy, fills your heart with love, and builds your confidence? She also says we have one opportunity to make this best life we can with the hand we've been dealt. And it's never too late for a new beginning, no matter how small. Maybe it's committing to a daily walk, taking a painting class, or unplugging from technology one day a week. Or how about spending time in nature, saying no more often, or signing up for a fitness class? It could be bigger too, like changing careers, ending an unhealthy relationship, or moving to a different home or city. As she puts it, no one knows better than yourself what you honestly need, and you're the only one who can hit the refresh button too. Welcome back. Hitting the refresh button. How can we hit the refresh button to have a fresh start if we are not happy in our lives, if we do need a change? Uh, it's not easy to move on. It's not easy to change our lives um, all of a sudden, maybe. So how can we uh, push that button 
And uh, as the report said, that could be uh, simple by just doing a simple thing. Yeah. And that could actually be a major thing like changing career, changing yes. unhealthy right. relationship or moving to a new uh, house maybe. So what's your take on that? Okay. So actually to decide to hit the refresh button, if we start with our vision and say, I know where I want to be a year from now mm. and start drafting that, painting it and seeing how it looks like, mm. then the steps that would take us or would lead us to that would be easy to, to, to go through mm. or achieve. Yeah. So if we know where we want to be and we're, we're really convinced mm. that this is our own vision, it's nobody else's, it's not that someone told me this is where I want to be, mm. I can then push myself and decide to take the first step. Mm. And I would say actually usually the first step is the most difficult yeah, it's one. Very, it's very difficult. Yes. yes. Yes, the, but once it, it, it's, it's scary to, to move from where you are, even if you are not happy. Yep, of course. But then as, as mm. we just heard in the report, sometimes mm. for some people, the change could be simply just changing a few habits or trying to, uh, to mm. uh, maybe do something different, mm. maybe start doing some kind of sport, mm. maybe adopting a hobby that you've been wanting to learn or... Uh, or practice for a few years and, it, and you never got the chance to do that. So it's sometimes you just simply have to take baby steps mm -hmm. towards your vision mm -hmm. and not do major changes if you're afraid of change. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Marwa, some people are not happy, yes. but um, they do think maybe where I am is better. Uh -huh. Maybe I could uh, remain unhappy that way it's better than uh, making a change and I could be uh, more unhappy yeah. than that moment. Yep. So I will not, uh, the, my situation, I will not change my career, for example. I would not uh, change this relationship. I would not change whatsoever is making me uh, unhappy. So what, what can you say to those people? Is it better to remain where I am? Is it better to um, not take the risk of the change? Because uh, when you, you take a major change in your life uh, here, I'm not talking about playing sports yes. or yes. having an activity, of course, of course. Of course. Uh, that could lead to uh, maybe you are taking a risk. Mm -hmm. You will be either happier yes. or maybe not. Yes. So uh, how can we do the, the right calculation here? Or uh, do you advise people to move on and take the risk or stay where they are? Okay. So we simply need to ask ourselves, what's the worst that's going to happen? Mm. Sometimes we're just sitting where we are, afraid of the consequences, afraid of lots of things and afraid of change and afraid of taking that step, maybe I'm going to be more mm. unhappy. Mm. But then what? Years go by mm. and then life goes by and I realize that I'm, because of fear, I I'm just move. sitting where I am. Mm. And that's it, life ends, <laughs> right? So if we put that in mind mm. and ask ourselves what's the worst that's going to happen and then prepare ourselves to mm. simply accept that mm. because without risk taking we're just going to stay where we are mm. then maybe we can simply push ourselves a little bit mm. that would bring me to the most important word here which is fear yes uh, fear of change yes. fear of leaving my comfort zone to a, a new, the, unknown. To, um, the unknown and here the unknown is a very big word which is, scare, is, is really scary for people. It's a fiery, uh, um, uh, scary word that uh, might deter us from taking any serious step. Yes, and the unknown for a lot of people is, uh, represents failure sometimes, mm -hmm. okay? So we tell ourselves, I'm afraid of doing that. What if I fail? Mm -hmm. okay. So if we tell ourselves that all successful people have actually failed before, mm. then this is how we need to look at change and mm. look at different situations. Mm. If we look at, at uh, um, famous people, mm. at artists, at um, Bill Gates, uh -huh. did not finish university, at Steve Jobs, mm. at, uh, everyone that is now really successful has actually mm. failed before. Mm. So uh, all the mediocres, all the normal people, mm. people who haven't achieved their dreams, are people who just want to do things by the book, 
mm -hmm. and not really try new things. So without mm -hmm. trying, I'm just trying to stay uh, where you are. Just walk uh, next to the wall with no risks, no major decisions. Yeah, but then mm -hmm. again, there's something that says no pain, no gain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it, at work, if you don't take risks, then you're not going to develop. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're not going to eventually meet your targets. If you just don't work, you're not going to achieve anything. Right? That would bring me to talk about the comfort zone. Yes. And I believe that you did write a book about that issue, about life outside our comfort zone. Yes. Uh, how can you see the life outside of our comfort zone that you have been used to, that we have been um, accepting, even if we are not happy inside yeah. this comfort zone, and we, we need to move yes. to uh, a happier uh, place, yeah. but yet we are scared. Exactly. So can you tell us more about that and uh, your experience uh, in uh, that you, you have Stretching shared? Stretching the comfort yeah. zone. Yeah. So actually the, the comfort zone is an imaginary zone of course. That, uh, that does not exist. So mm. we put borders to ourselves. We tell mm. ourselves that I can do those few tasks, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I know those responsibilities, I know that kind of job, I love going out with those kinds of people, uh, I'm used to my home, I cannot live anywhere else. So there are lots of things that lie inside our comfort zone, Indeed. whether we're comfortable with or they became habits. Mm. So not necessarily things that I love doing, what lies inside could be things that I got used to do. Mm. And then there are lots of things that lie outside. Uh, fear of changing jobs, meeting new people, mm. maybe people who fear public speaking, presentations. Mm. There are lots of things that mm. lie outside that we don't, don't want to step our leg outside and try. Um, so with the simple fact that we can stretch that mm. zone, we need to put in our mind that if I decide to just work on one single thing that is outside mm. my comfort zone, you'll realize that the comfort zone stretches to yeah. encompass and bring inside yeah. lots of other things. Mm. So if I decide, for example, that I'm going to work on my presentation skills, and then I stand and prepare a presentation very well and start presenting it in front of the board of directors of my yeah. company, for example, I start communicating with them and sort of develop my communication skills as well. Mm. I start making deals and agreements maybe mm. with, with them one-to-one. -one. So I grow in terms of people skills and mm. learning things about people. So not only did presentation skills improve, but other things came inside the zone by default. So it mm. stretches that way. Yeah. Uh, with that perception in mind, we sort of have to tell ourselves we need to take that step. Mm -hmm. And I personally did that when I quit my, my full-time job and the that it's over. I cannot take that stress anymore. I'm going to do something about it. Yes. It's not an easy decision, I have to say. Mm. But then major, major decisions are never easy. Yes. Mm. Yes. If you put inside yourself the belief that things will work out somehow, mm. they work out. We, we always fear the unknown or the uncertainties. Yeah. Well, we'll get back to that point, which is the fear of the unknown. But first, I'll take this uh, phone call with Dr. Magda Amir, our Islamic thinker. Dr. Magda. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? How are you? Happy New Year. I'm fine. Happy New Year, uh, Dr. Magda. Dr. Magda, how can we start uh, the New Year 2017 with uh, optimism, with uh, hope of a better year, inshallah? Yes, uh, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves the one who is optimist and uh, being uh, pessimist is from devil, yeah? and this mm. is first of all. Mm. So, uh, and the prophet urged uh, all the Muslims to, uh, to uh, bring good, uh, glad tidings, to be mm. have all the, the smile, to be optimist. Uh, and and in, you know, from the scientific point of view, Mm. You, you, you're more attractive, you're like ma a magnet when you, you're smiling and you're optimistic. And mm. remember the positive affirmation and yeah, you watch your words. Mm. This is very important. My, I, I really highlight this uh, that whenever you speak negative, you just have to cancel it and replace it by a positive word. Mm. And remember that the brain uh, 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 store the last affirmation. Mm. So uh, 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 always cancel whatever is negative, negative news, negative... Uh
uh, any anything about the future be positive and uh, put your goal in, in, uh, as um, in front of you and uh, make sure that Allah will assist you always yeah. yes uh, and and remember in the my last video so mm -hmm. whenever there is a, a, a difficulty there, uh, there is always an easiness mm -hmm. and even it is repeated twice in the my last in the my last so with difficulty, there is always easiness. Mm. So be optimistic and focus on the positivity. Mm. Uh, focusing on positivity, Dr. Magda, uh, that should be our slogan for the new year 2017. Of course, many people did face many hardships, many problems during 2016. Many people are not very optimistic or they are a bit down. So um, what are your tips here, Dr. Magda, for the people in order to uh, uh, face uh, the challenges with uh, tolerance, with hope, with optimism for the in next... Hadith that is hadith is, is that is really very important. The Prophet said, even if the hereafter is about to be arise, mm. at the last moment of your life on earth, mm. still if you have a plant and small plant in your hand, you have to plant it and be productive. Mm. So this is how we, we should always think. The attitude of a believer is mm. to be productive, to be uh, positive. And never uh, despair from the hope of Allah's mm. Mm. Uh Remember, when you are positive, you attract the positivity. Mm. So we have to emanate this energy, energy of positivity, uh, and to attract the same way. Yes. Whatever you, you emanate, you receive it from the other side. Yes. Uh, Dr. So, Magda, uh, yes, uh, since you are also an expert in the field of energy, uh, yes. how can we start to uh, attract positive vibes in, in the new year? And uh, as we have been talking here with uh, Ms. Marwa, that uh, people, uh, uh, when talking positive to themselves, when they are trying to uh, coach themselves how to be more positive, that leads actually to uh, uh, concrete positive steps in their lives. Well, a simple way is the attitude of, uh, of gratitude. Mm. Gratitude is very important. Mm. Every day in the morning, remember all the bounties of Allah. Mm. Yeah, like, uh, make a list of whatever is good in your life. Yes. About your health, about your children, about how, alhamdulillah, you're not uh, sick and you're not in, uh, in bed. You're not, alhamdulillah. For, Mm. Yeah, say, make an affirmation of positivity, mm. of gratitude. Mm. So when you live with the gratitude, in my opinion, this is the mm. best way to cancel completely any negativity in your life. Indeed, the Dr. Magda Amir. Our Before husband. sleeping, the same way you repeated uh, whatever uh, is the bounties of Allah on you and on uh, your children and your surroundings. Hopefully. Uh, Dr. Magda Amir, our Islamic singer, thank you very much uh, for your uh, input. And uh, back to our dear guest in the studio, Ms. Marwa. Um, the fear of uh, change and um, the fear of the unknown mm -hmm. um, is a very crucial point that uh, might hinder uh, or uh, lead us to retreat from taking any uh, serious step to change ourselves to the positive to, to be more positive or to make positive moves in our lives of course yeah and the, actually that fear of unknown makes us feel that we want to be in control all the time i want to mm. be in control of the situation i mm. want to know uh, uh, what i'm doing today i want to know that my job is going well that i'm getting money at the end of the day mm. that uh, my family is secure and mm. so yet at the end of the day if we, we, from what, whatever we pass through across the years, mm. we realize that even if we get into tough situations, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. somehow some magic hand takes you through life. And then God takes you to where you need to be at the mm. end of the day. Indeed. You need to tell yourself, mm. I need to surrender and let go to the fact that I need to be in control all the time. You actually don't have to be in control all the time. Here, that would bring me to ask this question, what is the role of faith here in uh, being optimistic here? It is very important. Mm -hmm. It is very important. But a lot of times we tell ourselves that I have faith in God. I believe that God is going to protect me. Yet deep down, we don't <laughs> act this way. True. Yeah? So we tell ourselves, mm -hmm. I believe in God. I believe that uh, I, I'm protected. I'm guarded. God is guiding me. 
yet we do have the fear. Yeah, I'm worried and mm. I have fear. But is that normal? And how I can teach myself to be strong, to move ahead? If I'm not happy, I need to take decision. I have to be optimistic. Um, and I, sometimes I, I do need a fresh start. Of course. Um, I've people a couple of days ago that if you start counting your fears mm. and then uh, uh, look at them, Mm -hmm. you'll realize that a lot of them have not really happened, mm -hmm. okay? So if, for example, you have fear of, of death, you have fear of, uh, some people fear so certain animals, animals <laughs> illnesses, stuff like that. Yeah. So you probably fear animals, so you fear get bitten by a dog. Mm -hmm. But if you think of the past, like, a couple of years that you've been living, did it happen? Mm -hmm. No. So actually the probability of your fears actually happening to mm. you is very much but what if my fears or some of my fears did happen actually and i did survive them exactly that's the thinking mm. so they happened how big were they and even if they are big yeah you've survived them yeah. you're still here you you you're still mm. living Mm. So then this in itself is something that you need to be grateful for mm. and that needs to allow you to sort of uh, uh, believe more in God and have more faith and, mm. and move on mm -hmm. with life. Uh, Ms. Marwa, as we are in 2019, we are having a new year and we wish, of course, that this year would be less harsh on, on us than yes. 2016. Hopefully. <laughs> Uh, we hope that it would bring us happiness and it would be more prosperous here. What's um, your tips for people in order to face the new year with uh, more optimism, with uh, more hope, and people who need to do um, drastic changes in their lives, they should do that. They should not be afraid of the change. They should push the button. Change of, button. Uh, of change, <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. So actually, step one is put visions in front mm. of yourselves. Write down your visions. But mm. then again, some people might come and tell me, I, I have a vision for my family. Mm. I have a vision in terms of career. I have a vision in terms of a talent that I want to learn, for example. What do I start with? So mm. I would say simply just pick your battles. You cannot do everything mm -hmm. uh, at the same time. So if you set your priorities, even in terms of visions, and decide that, for example, in 2017, mm. I need to focus more on my family, mm. on the well-being of my family. Mm. And picture, how do I want my family to look like at the end of the year? Uh, where do we want to be uh, fi uh, financially or emotionally? Or how do we want to stand together as a family, for example? Mm. And have a clear picture of that. Then this is what you need to be working on step by step. I'm not saying that you don't need to have other visions. I'm just saying that you need to sort of prioritize things that stress us and put us under pressure and then decide that we're not going to do any new beginnings. This is how life is. is uh, the fact Marwa, that sorry for interruption here, but some people are not capable of taking drastic decisions in their lives. Yes. Even if they are not happy at all, they are trapped. Yeah, that's why I'm saying pick your battles. So if, for example, now I need the security of my job, and even if I don't like my job, this is where I need to stay at this mm. point in time, then maybe there are other things in life that you can change mm -hmm. and start working on that would eventually make you look at your life and mm. maybe probably look at your job in a different way. Mm. So you, you know yourself better. You know what you're capable of doing mm. at this stage. If you decide to take baby steps and change small things, like in the tips they, mm -hmm. that we heard a, a while ago, it was saying simply adopting a new sport, taking a new lifestyle, eating healthy food that eventually affects my mood. These are all steps towards well-being, towards change in some kind of positive direction. Mm -hmm. So things that I can do. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, and we, don't, we need to be not harsh on ourselves mm. and decide that we're not going to... But if you are not happy and you are not capable of taking decision, we cannot move, we cannot uh, get out of your comfort zone, that would um, exert tremendous pressure on you. Of course. So uh, how, how can we get out of that? 
by deciding and only you deciding that you need to do something yes. about as it. a coach here yeah how that could be done okay so it's it it could only be done by the person really wanting to do that mm. and there are lots of things that you can do for for some people you can go to coaches that can help you get mm. get get through life and decide to change things in your mm. life uh, you can simply think of all the positive things that you have and decide how you want to go from there how do you want to build on them so it's it's simply picking a few positive things maybe that you can do every day um, i find what i find also mm. useful is deciding to do something good for someone every mm. day that in itself can put you in a positive mood and maybe eventually decide that you are worth something you can do something good hopefully uh, people would be more optimistic people who need the, to do uh, drastic changes in their lives they would be capable of doing that and would these moves be positive for them uh, we wish uh, everyone a very happy new year thank you very much, uh, thank much you. Uh, Ms. Marwa Salah, thank you. our NLP coach and happy new year for you thank you thank you very much and with that, our dear viewers, we come to the end of this edition of Body and Soul. Hope you have enjoyed it. Until we meet again, I'm Mahisti Rabia signing off.